Hey. Hey. What's going on? Getting a new jukebox. Well, what's wrong with the old one? People don't want to hear music sung by dead folks. Oh. Yeah, they do. Nope. They want that new country. Oh, God. No, they don't. Eli doesn't. No, I don't. Mike doesn't. Yeah, I do. See there? And Mike knows music. You drinking or talking? So what are you going to do with that jukebox? I don't know. <laughs> it ain't going to play in the back of your truck. Want to shoot some pool? Nah. Well, you're about as much fun as a sack of tapers. Hey, hey Mike, let's shoot some steam. Rack them up. I'm sorry it took a while to come in. You know, in 40 years, I never had a call for it. Pure in a line, Jack. I'll be. If you wait a few minutes, my boys will load you up. Yeah. Gart, feather me. Uh, be careful. Between 10, those bags weigh 50 pounds apiece. Take the other end. So old lady, you want to get in? I'll take you home now. What's wrong with his hair? He doesn't have any. One of the other characters in this story is Cal, the forensics expert, who is played by Rick Dial. I spotted Rick in Sling Blade and The Apostle. He's not actually a professional actor. He owns a furniture store in the South. But I love the honesty that he had in those films. I always try and get interesting people for minor roles, even though they may not be professional actors. What the hell happened to you? Well, you know, not everybody loves me as much as you do, Cal. This is Sarah Sunhill. Hello. How are you? The entire world walked around this body. Paul, there's got to be 50 boot prints here. Have you found the clothes yet? Not yet. I figured he'd want some space, so I commandeered an empty hanger. Good man. Have everything taken there. Okay. Is there any trace of semen on the victim? I ran an ultraviolet. I can't find any. The coroner will run vaginal, oral, and anal swabs, and we'll know about that in due course. It is a strange rape. Yeah. The panties under the rope as if to protect your neck from a burn. I mean, what's a little rope burn if you're going to kill somebody? Sun Hill's good. Oh, yeah. The organics on Elizabeth Campbell came back. There was no sign of rape. What are your thoughts on this? Parent suicide, start pattern, close contact wound, and I don't buy it. I'll do a UV and shake his hands for a gunpowder residue. I'll let you know if I find any inconsistencies. Seaver. Cal, it's me. You arrest Fowler? No, let me speak to Sunhill. She's not here. She got in an hour ago, then said she was going back out to the crime scene. She go out there alone? No, sir. She took the big dog with her. Captain America himself. Captain. It's his idea. He wants you to meet him out there. Yeah, of course he does. You're the shrink, aren't you? No, not really. But you do therapy? Not anymore. Yeah, but you've helped some people in this town. I couldn't really say. But that's all over now. I tell you, Doc, the wife and I, we got a little bit of a problem. You mind if I just ran it by you? Go ahead. Rick Dial. Oh, boy. I would like to say he's a non-actor, but he's a second-time actor. And he was in, you know, Billy Bob used him in uh, Sling Blade, and I just, I, I had to have this guy. He could work. He could work forever anywhere. He's an amazing guy. <laughs> I like it. Well, uh, talk it over with my partner now. He knows more about the car and the business than I do. All right, I'll, I'll check you later. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm, that's why I need you. 
Ooh, that's why I love you. Ooh, why I need you. Da, 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 da. Sir. Well, Apostle, good to see you this morning. Yes, How sir. you been? Good morning. Well, pull up a chair. Yes, sir. Pull up a chair. What can I do for the Apostle this morning? Well, I'll tell you. How'd you know I was an Apostle? Oh, new spreads. What can I do for you today? Well, I tell you, I, I, I'd like to see about getting on the radio for some promotion of a church I'm trying to get going for the Lord. I have a hole in this background, and uh, what I want to know is, had you had any religious spots in the past that you sold the preacher to air on? Yeah, you bet I have. You did, so how'd it work out for the most part? Well, I've had a number of preachers in the past, some good and some not so good. How so? Well, some have been all right, but others, for instance, have skipped time before they paid me. Is that right? Yeah, so I've had to learn the hard way. It's got to be a pay-before-you-pray deal, and that's what I tell everybody. Of course, there hadn't been that many lately, but it's a pay-before-you-pray, and that's for those who are just looking to pass on through. I, I don't blame you. One other thing, no fancy stuff. We don't allow speaking on tongues. Only the King's English here. No speaking on tongues over these airwaves. I, I understand. I can understand that. Uh, so, uh, what kind of preacher are you anyway? We're coming to you live from the one-way road to heaven, Holiness Temple. It's out on uh, Highway 10, north of town, old Highway 10. Today is like the one-month anniversary of the first service the church held. I'll tell you, that first service, mighty slim, seven, eight people. It's grown in one month. The folks, this, the, the grounds are just full of people. I'm looking around, I see kids playing frisbees, kids playing with kickballs, baseballs, softballs. Right here, we got an old-fashioned sack race. Let's see if we got a winner here. We got a... Oh! <laughs> and I just, I just told Ricky Dial. I says, you know, you get out there and improvise, you know. And a lot of this, I didn't, I didn't see some of it till I got back to my farm in Virginia, because I would only watch the, the, uh, the rushes on the weekend, because I, I, I didn't watch them, and I wanted to get my rest. I, I can't speak highly enough about this guy as a natural actor. I hope to hire him in future things from, from my own projects. KBBR. Brother Elmo. Elmo. Well, let's see. Apostle, I guess... Uh, <laughs> it's I'm wonderful what he that, does. Uh, is. I'm thankful that God sent you to my station, and I'm thankful that there were plenty of these people listening, and they're here tonight, and I'm, well, I'm just thankful to be anywhere. <laughs> hey, Bill, good to see you, man. It's been a long time. It's good to see you, too. How's everybody doing? All pretty good. Kids are driving me crazy, and Phyllis going to put me in the poorhouse, but I can't complain other than that. Wouldn't do any good if I did. You know Scooter Terry? I don't know what I do. Good to meet you, Scooter. How about you? Well, this is him when I was telling you about it on the phone. Now, like I said, if you get nervous about it, I'll understand. I'm not gonna lie to you. He did get into that trouble, but then he was young. And I remember that real well. He cut those folks to pieces, and his mama was one of them. Yeah, and that old Dixon boy. Oh, hell, I always wanted to kill him myself. Asshole's what he was. You know, I remember that old boy, too kind of retarded or something back in school. Well, seems like he's pretty well adjusted these days. He, uh, don't think he'd ever hurt anybody. Yeah, he don't look much like he would. He can say he can fix a small engine like nobody's business. He's a regular whiz. It's all he's done since he was a kid. You scared of him, Scooter? No, I don't guess so. Can he talk? Oh, yeah. Now, you say he can, uh, stay out back? Yeah, it's fine with me. If he steals anything, I'm going to take it out of your pocket anyway. <laughs> oh, he won't steal. He's a pretty good old boy, really. Keeps to himself. Well, I got a room full of work for him to do. I can't get Scooter to do any of it. Carl, come over here. I want you to meet your new boss. It's Bill Cox. He runs a place, says that you can work here and stay out back. It's good to know you, Carl. Thank you. 